are you doing it authentically? Do people believe what you're saying? Just because you're on Instagram 20 times a day does not mean you're an expert in Instagram. The number next to your name means something in today's world, for better or for worse, I'm not going to say it's a good or a bad thing, is I was trained to think big. I couldn't go into a meeting and talk about something that was going to reach 1,000 or 10,000 or even 100,000. So wherever you're at today, I want you to stop and really think about this question I'm going to ask you. What does it actually take? What does it take for you right now listening to me to be a top 1% salesperson in your industry with what you sell? Okay, the salesperson who makes all of the money, who gets any promotion they want. In fact, they turn down promotions they don't want. They have all the respect of everyone in the company, including their management, their ownership teams, the salesperson who leads by example because they outsell everyone else. Well, my next guest is gonna help answer that question for you. Let me give you a small taste of this man's background. He is a digital and business strategist for Fortune 500 corporations, brands, and celebrities, we're gonna get into that. He thrives on helping brands systematically find and engage new audiences who reward relevant content, products and services with their attention and ad spend. He started his career with Lakeshore Entertainment where he worked on 16 films that generated a worldwide gross sales of a whopping $685 million plus. He's known for creating an innovative application for Taylor Swift, we're gonna ask him about that, and Rihanna, that automatically turned any Facebook profile into a website in less than 60 seconds. I gotta know how that works. Now the applications and platforms he created for his celebrity clients have been assessed by 50 plus people, 50 million plus people worldwide. That is insane. He's also served as a consultant for the NHL and NFL, love the NFL, helping to bolster their digital offering for both players and fans. And in partnership with MTV, he's conceptualized and built an advertising technology that's monetized consumer to consumer interaction within social networks. This technology was utilized by MGM, Lionsgate, Sony, Yahoo, MTV, Rock Band, and Vice Magazine. What has this man not done? He's helped grow Strike Social to one of the top social media buying intelligent companies in the world, and Strike Social runs over 2,500 advertising campaigns a day for brands like Disney, Fox, NBC, Netflix, Xbox, LinkedIn, and many notable Fortune. 100 companies. His social selling strategies are responsible for hundreds of millions of followers for his clients and billions, that's with a B, of views online. And he went on to publish the best selling book, One Million Followers, breaking down how he's able to achieve such a feat. And his brand new book is called Hook Point How to Stand Out in a Three Second World. Brandon, I don't know what you haven't done. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Brandon Kane. Thanks Love for it. having me. I appreciate it. It's great to connect with you and all the listeners. Just a humble guy, I love that. I love that the most. So, you know, today's a unique show uh, and we brought you on for a very specific purpose. You see, our listeners understand that we are in a new age of selling. Selling has changed, buying behaviors from consumers have changed drastically. It's like they change every couple of years. And one major differentiating factor is the power of social media and social selling and how social media can really help sales professionals generate leads for themselves. They don't even have to be dependent on a company and really help them stand out in the market as more of the trusted authority. And that's one thing that, that I love about reading some of your stuff is that you take a scientific, not just a, I hope it works out theory, but a scientific analytical approach to selling using techniques on social media that work with human behavior rather than so many techniques that work against human behavior. So let's do this. I wanna dive right into your story, give our listeners really a feel for your background and how you arrived at this point where you're one of the elite authorities on social selling and influence. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background and how this started? I mean, you weren't born out of your mother's womb knowing how to do this. Like, how did you learn all these skills? It's quite an interesting backstory because there's different components to it is like, First off, when you talk about selling, I, I don't know that I realized I was an entrepreneur until like 23, 24, but just thinking back all the way till when I was like six or seven, I would take my toys 
and go walk around the neighborhood, knock on neighbors' doors and see if I could sell my toys to the, the, the kids' parents. Uh, so I've kind of been in this learning phase ever since the earliest stages. But when it comes to kind of like starting my career, I wanted to produce movies. And I went to film school and quickly realized they don't teach you anything about business in film school. Sure. Uh, so I figured the best way to really learn about business was start your own in the most cost efficient way at the time. And it still holds true today was to start internet companies. Uh, so I started a few internet companies while I was going to college just to really learn and experiment. Yeah. And then when I moved to Los Angeles in 2005 to pursue a career in film, mm. it was when the entertainment industry started to reawaken, uh, to mm -hmm. digital after the dot com bust. Yeah. And again, my whole thesis and ethos is yeah. how do you stand out? How do you differentiate yourself in yeah. very crowded markets? Yeah. And I just noticed that, listen, there was tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of other people moving to LA every year that wanted to be movie producers. Yeah. And it just wasn't really unique of me just being another young kid that wants to be a producer. So I had to find an angle in yeah. and I just saw that there was a lot of high profile executives, directors, actors <laughs> asking how do we, you know, leverage digital? How do we leverage, leverage social, which was very new on the scene. Very new. Because an interesting thing happens is once a movie's done, mm. there's all of a sudden like this panic and anxiety that, oh my God, we just spent all this money producing this thing. How do we make sure that people show up? Because this is a very different industry. Is like, you don't, you cannot survive if you get 10,000 people to buy your product. Yeah. Like you need to be in the hundreds of thousands of millions to buy and in order to you got to get that, people to that movie. Yeah. And in order to do that, that means you've got to reach hundreds of millions of people to make that happen. Yeah. Uh, so I worked within that ecosystem and yeah. stood out very quickly and went from yeah. somebody with his making coffee and copies to mm. building a digital division for a studio and then running another digital division for another studio. And I was overseeing the marketing campaigns for films ranging from 15 to $100 million budgets which also opened up the opportunity to sure. work directly with the actors, directors, and producers online. Yeah. Yeah. And let's talk about that. So let's talk about, maybe talk about your experience working with Taylor Swift, obviously very popular, you know, even country and pop star. I would say it's kind of a combo. I mean, my daughters are listening to her songs when they're in the car. Um, how were you able to establish that relationship and really close that relationship? Yeah. So after working in the studio system for a while, I just realized, you know, everybody thinks it's this like sexy and creative industry, but honestly, it's another corporation. And yeah. I just don't fit that mold. Like I'm an mm. entrepreneur at heart. Yeah. So I left and I started building my own tech platforms and licensing them back to big media companies. So I built them for the likes of Viacom, MTV, Vice, Paramount, Yahoo, yeah. uh, to name a few. And it was really the MTV partnerships uh, that opened up the doors to work with some of these big celebrities. So I... Sure. I had closed uh, two deal licensing deals for technologies with an ex executive at MTV. Yeah. And, you know, one of them was going to be used for, or was being used for this bigger initiative of how to tie more directly into the business lines of the musicians and celebrities that they were helping to build. Sure. So the executive was like, hey, do you want to go and meet this girl, Taylor Swift? Now, at the time, she wasn't the global superstar that she was. Sure. Uh, that or was right now. Now she was at that inflection point because I re can remember back the first time I met her and the head of her record label was backstage at the Grammys, but I still, I didn't really know who she was. Who she was, right. But it was really uh, born off of the, the strategic partnership that I had formed yeah. with MTV to open up that door. Okay. So you open up the door um, and let's, let's talk. So you open up that door, you got in with her and what happened with her social media following? I know you worked on this. So what, what happened at that point? So the work that we did with her and her team was more centered around her, her online official website and fan club initiative. So when we were first brought to her, she had like a 98% bounce rate off her homepage. Time spent was less than 30 se uh, seconds. Yeah. And she was really hands off when mm -hmm. she wanted to be hands on because yeah. we remember back it like develop and it's still today is like when you develop a website you're not as hands-on as you can be with social media and sure. Taylor Swift is the reason for her own success it's not because of anybody else than her sheer brilliance and will to connect with fans at scale right so we wanted to to make sure that that could cross over to her online presence yeah uh, so we had built a 
community with her on her official website and connecting fans together with other technology to bring it up to after like two years, like the average time spent on site was was from like 30 seconds to like 22 minutes. That's a big so difference. We took a huge shift. Yeah. Yeah. We also <laughs> built a, shift. yeah, we, we also built a, a, a tool to bring fans closer to Taylor and allow them to express and share Taylor's brand, which was when we were doing due diligence on the Taylor Nation uh, relaunch, which is their fan club, we noticed that there was like 30, like 30 ish fans that actually took the time to learn how to read and write code so that they could build their own Taylor Swift official set site. Okay. So when doing that research, we thought, well, okay, that's great. But what about the rest of the fans? Because like Taylor was just a, a master at building brand advocates. Like what if we could give that power to the rest of the brand advocates? Mm. And that's when we built uh, this platform that literally could turn your Facebook profile uh, into a Taylor Swift fan site automatically for you in less than 60 seconds by simply clicking a button. Wow. And we went from 30 Taylor Swift fan sites to over 35,000 in just uh, a few months. That's going to grow your brand big time. So let's talk about your book. Your, your book, you talk, and you talked a little bit about this initially. You talk about how actors in Hollywood that are now chosen for roles, a lot of times are chosen for roles now based on how strong their social media following is, that movie production companies really want to see that, they favor that. How could a salesperson use their social media following to really land and hold jobs with really reputable companies? Yeah, I mean, the, the number next to your name means something in today's world, for better or for worse. I'm not gonna say it's a good or a bad thing. It's just yeah. the reality of the situation. And as you pointed out, there are certain industries where that number means more like in the movie industry, yeah. Yeah. you know, a actor's uh, social presence makes it a little bit easier of a decision because the producer or the studio can say, okay, listen, they've got in a, a pre-existing fan base. So it mitigates our risk. Uh, the same thing with book publishers, the book publishers are doing it, trying mm. to get press opportunities. You know, yeah. the press wants to cover people that have some type of, of influence. So okay. there is a, a tremendous opportunity uh, for yeah. certain industries and sectors. I'm not going to say for every industry or sector, but it does mm. provide a level of validation and credibility. Sure. It brings big credibility and that's what salespeople want. Now let's talk about the 1 million followers, right? This book. Why did you choose that number? 1 million followers and why in 30 days? Tell us the backstory of that. Well, it was, it, it was not a matter of if I could do it because I had spent three and a half years developing this system, working with mm. prominent athletes and journalists and celebrities, uh, honing it in. It was a matter of why. And mm. it plays into the second book, which is called Hook Point, How to okay. Stand Out in a Three-Second World. And yeah. a hook point is really a, a tool mm. to grab attention uh, because okay. as you started off the podcast, we live in a very noisy and oversaturated world. There's over 60 billion messages sent out on digital platforms each day. Yeah. You're no longer in a world where you're just competing against your direct competition. You're competing against every other piece of content. Like it or not, you're competing against Netflix. Yeah. You're competing against LeBron James, The Rock, all these people. Yeah. Yeah. So you need some way to earn attention and win that attention. Yeah. And that's what a hook point allows you to do. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought about doing a book for a while and I just didn't mm -hmm. feel like I had that hook point, that way to differentiate and stand out. Yeah. And because I had done these exercises or experiments with other notable celebrities and I knew it was possible, I had come up with, okay, well, what if I did a million followers in 30 days? And I ran it past a very prominent literary agent. I said, listen, yeah. if, if I do this, do you think that you would sign me and get me a publishing deal? And he said, yes. Yeah. So it was really... Uh, a tool, a yeah. hook point to grab people's attention for a larger conversation that I wanted to have with them to share all of the learnings that I've had through yeah. social media and also through my, my partners as well. I, and I think it's so true. Like you have to have a hook point in our day and age, because especially if you're in sales, like you're being sold something 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Maybe you don't even realize it, right? So when you wake up in the morning, What's the first thing you do? You go to your social media and there's somebody trying to sell you something. There's an ad there trying to sell you something. You turn on the TV, there's a commercial trying to sell you something, right? You get in your car, you turn on the radio, somebody's trying to sell you something, right? You drive down the road, there's billboards on the highways trying to sell you something, right? Every single day, every single hour, you are competing with, like you said, them watching Netflix, 
Netflix is trying to sell them to watch their shows, right? Them watching LeBron James play basketball. NBA is trying to sell you on spending your time watching the NBA, right? That's how they drive revenue. So you're being sold something all the time. If you're being sold something, your prospects are being sold just as much or more. So you, like you said, you really have to hook them in and really stand out from the crowd. Let's talk about a little bit more about that. So, cause I, you know, a lot of gurus in your space, like the social selling space, will talk about how you first need to, you know, get that first few thousand true followers and then build out from there. But you've got this completely different view, which I agree with, that is wide as possible philosophy where you encourage people to really make as much noise as you can and not be ignored and then maybe scale the attention back. Tell us a little bit more about the difference in that. Yeah, so going back to, to what, we, what we were just talking about and also my beginnings in the, the film industry is I was trained to think big. I couldn't go into a meeting and talk about something that was gonna reach 1,000 or 10,000 or even 100,000. You would've been fired. Yeah, I had to go off with concepts that would reach 10, 50, 100 million people. Yeah. So because that's where I started out, that's where I always go with the strategies that I create for myself and for my clients is like, how do we go as big as possible? Mm. And thus, like, again, a million followers in 30 days, it wasn't really about the million people yeah. that I was connecting with, which they were all real people all around the world. It was more about what that meant, mm. like that number on the book, that number next to my name yeah. provided other opportunities or provided securing a literary agent, a publishing deal, speaking in front of thousands of people, mm. being on major podcasts, television, print, mm. you know, signing uh, major corporate clients, things of that nature. Okay. So that's where it's like, my my brain is designed to think big and thus what i like to do is well let's go as big as possible so mm. you stand out mm. and then work your way back in through to find those thousand true fans if that's what you're attempting to do or are as many of those clients uh that you're looking for and also to your point it was uh earlier it was just that ford's released an article that said the average person is exposed to between four thousand and ten thousand ads a day yeah. so it's like if that's the case at a minimum, you have to be in the top 10 just to be remembered, right. not alone. How do you actually get them to perform the action that you're looking for? 100%. It's so true. You're being sold something to all of the time. Everybody's competing for your attention. It's the information age. That's what we live in, right? Been here for a long time. It's only getting more of that. Now, let's talk about this book again, 1 Million Followers. You detail your scientific approach, hypothesis, test, pivot. Can you teach us a little bit more about that strategy? The strategy is simple, but it's not necessarily easy. Yeah. It's, it's constantly testing and iterating to see what messages or what hooks really resonate at scale. So mm -hmm. when I built a million followers in hundred countries in 30 days, it was this hypothesis test and pivot. I would have a hypothesis is what is the hook mm -hmm. that I think people is going to get to, okay. to stop in their feed and then click the follow button. And once I had the hypothesis, I would quickly create a low cost proof of concept of it so I could test because I don't like to just talk about things or think about things. You actually have to go out and prove whether it works or not. I don't know what works. Yeah. And that's where the, the creating low cost proof of concept and then quickly testing it, uh, okay. which is then the second step. And then the third is analyzing the results. Yeah. Did it generate the intended response that I was looking for? Did it generate the follow? Mm. Uh, and if it didn't, then I had to pivot and repeat the process over and over again. So over the course of 30 days, I used this to essentially, I would schedule anywhere between 300 to 500 tests every day. Uh, and then I would schedule it for midnight. And when I look, woke up in the morning, I would look at the results, see what had worked yeah. and what didn't work. And I would take those learnings to fuel the next set of tests. And okay. I did that over and over again for 30 days to testing 5,000 variations of content. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody has to test that, that, ex <laughs> that extreme. That's just kind of the process that I developed and the exercise. And again, like, and the reason that I, I spent the past two years working on this hook point book is mm. everything fundamentally starts with, can you grab attention? Mm. Because you can't succeed in driving a lead, a click, a sale, a follow, a share without grabbing attention. Everything starts there. And even if I gave you a million followers tomorrow, mm. if you don't know how to establish hooks, in your content, you're not going to get any reach with the algorithms because people are going to keep scrolling past your content and thus trigger to the algorithms and I'm going to suppress the reach of your account. 
That makes a lot of sense. Can you give our listeners maybe a few examples of hook points so they better understand kind of what you're talking about and, and why? Yeah, give some examples of maybe some hook points just so they can kind of see what you're talking about. It makes sense to me. I want to make sure it makes sense to everybody. Absolutely. So one is with my book, A Million Followers in, in 30 Days. That was a hook point that uh, sold uh, tons of books, uh, mm. tens of thousands of books all around the world. Also, I used it as a campaign to to generate 16,000 16, applications to work with me in a 60-day time period. Okay. Uh, so it's been used in many different disciplines. Uh, also, some other examples is uh, I use this analogy a lot because I, I think it helps uh, mm. people wrap their head around what it means to have a hook. Is One of the biggest challenges that people run into is that they say the same thing in the same way as everybody else. Mm. And people so there's think nothing different. Yeah, they think they're being unique, but they're not. So let me just give you an example. Let's just say we're launching a meditation app or a meditation retreat. Yeah. Is meditation has been talked about for thousands of years. If you type meditation into Google, there'd probably be 3 billion results that come up. Sure. So where most people would go is I'm going to design the ad that says, you know, meditation is the key to success yeah. or meditation is the key to happiness or stillness or whatever. Mm. The minute I see that, I'm like, okay, I know what this ad is going to say, or I know what this video is going to say. I'm just going to scroll past it yeah. versus like one of the tools that we use is subverting expectations. Now we don't use it all the time, but in certain use cases, it can be very powerful. So the way that I would reposition that is I would say meditation is a scam mm. to get people to stop. So that would be the headline. That's a hook. Is that a hook point? Yeah, that's a hook to get people to stop. It's a pattern interrupt because yeah. most people aren't used to doing seeing that. Yeah. So once I have their attention, then I can dive into the story. I could say, listen, you probably feel like meditation is a scam because it just hasn't worked for you. And I know I feel your pain because I've been there many times. There's mm. so much misinformation and so many gurus that try and teach you the wrong principles of it. But I can definitively tell you meditation works. And now I'm going to share the three tips that uh, work for me as somebody that went through the trials and tribulations and felt meditation was scammed for the longest time to now using it on a daily basis. So you're practice. identifying with them that you're no different than me, right? Yeah. I've had the same struggles as you. You've hooked them. It's like hook, story, and then almost your offer, right? So hook, story, yeah. offer type of thing. So we, I say that there's three pillars. Is, is there's the hook, yeah. which is the most important because if you don't have the hook, you can't get people to stop and pay attention. The yeah. second is the story. How mm -hmm. do you maintain the attention? And then the third is, are you doing it authentically? Do people believe what you're saying? Mm. And you need all three of those to work together yeah. in order for it to happen. Because like, let's just say you have a great hook, but your story sucks, then yeah. it's clickbait. Mm. If you have a great hook and a great story, but mm. you don't, people don't believe you, then it doesn't work. You yeah, need all that. three playing together. Yeah. Uh, some others, like you look at like Amazon, Amazon is a master at hooks. Mm -hmm. You know, so they started with their first hook was the world's largest bookstore. Yeah. You know, then they went to the, the everything store. Then the, the one click checkout, the two day shipping, Amazon prime, uh, yeah. looking at Netflix, Netflix killed Blockbuster. At one point, Blockbuster was valued at $8.4 billion, had the opportunity to acquire Netflix for 50 million. Right. And Netflix just killed them and hooks is like they went against the late fees, like which was the biggest pain point. Yeah. And then today you look at Netflix and they invest $17 billion a year in original content. Why? Because they know, they know that those hooks, the stranger things, the um, Will Smiths of the world are their hooks into driving their overall business. I mean more traffic. Yeah. And I can uh, give uh, your audience access to a masterclass for free that dives deeper into this, like an hour and a half of content of like, what is a hook, how to construct it and more examples. I, I love that. And then for our listeners who really want to grow their social following to help them in their sales profession, what platform would you recommend that they focus on first? So I always say, start with the platform okay. that you use every day, okay. because you have to be a student of the game. Mm. Like that's the biggest thing is people will come to me and they'd be like, I hate social media, but I feel like I have to be on it. Well, yeah. If you hate something, then how are you ultimately going to be successful with it? you got to find some redeeming factor with it, and you have to be a student of it. You have to consume the content from a standpoint of breaking down the principles of what make it, makes it work or doesn't. Just because you're on Instagram 20 times a day does not mean you're an expert in Instagram. Sure. If you're on it 20 times a day, then start breaking down what is the difference between this video that generated a million views versus this one that generated 10 views. Yeah. and break down those psychological principles. 
that is the first place that I start. And then the second place is understanding the, the consumption behavior of each platform and what are you trying to achieve? Okay. When you have like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, it's short form consumption behavior. Mm. Versus like YouTube, it's longer form consumption behavior. Mm. And there's different ways and different messages and different formats that work for different platforms. So knowing your strengths and your weaknesses and, and factoring that in as well. What, what would be the best piece of advice for like a sales professional or an entrepreneur who's kind of new to social media? And, and what advice do you have for those who already maybe have like a small following, but they want to really increase that? What's the biggest piece of advice? It's you've got to learn how to win attention. Mm. that's the biggest thing is because without it you're going to get surpassed and uh, people are not going to stop in yeah. scrolling or clicking and right. ultimately if it's organic you're going to get suppressed reach and you'll never grow if it's paid your cost in the auction will shoot up yeah. so your first goal is how can i master mm. getting somebody to stop and pay attention to what i have to say in three seconds or less hook points yeah. And again, like that doesn't, that can be in many different ways. There's different ways of doing that. It can be through a performance and can through, be through yeah. insight, it can be text, it can be video formats. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. one thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, this isn't just like copywriting. You know, <laughs> that it, it can be multiple different elements. And also people mistake that, that you have to deliver everything in the first three seconds. Like yeah. they need to know everything about you, your product, or your service in the first three seconds. That doesn't work. Because no. you'll overwhelm them. And that's another place that people go wrong is just think about the first three seconds to win the next five. Yeah. And then win the next 10, the next 15, the next. You want to hook them in so they become curious enough to want to engage. That's what you're yeah, wanting. want to learn more. Yeah. You're not trying to sell them in the first three or five seconds. You're just trying to get them to want to engage for more. What is a dark post? You talk about a dark post. What does that mean? So whenever you create an ad on Facebook and Instagram, it essentially uh, creates a dark post automatically and means that it's just not posted to your main feed, to your live feed. So what that does is it gives you flexibility okay. to test many variations of content to see what works without spamming your audience or spamming the feed. Ah, that makes sense. Now in the book, you talk about shareability is the most important KPI. Why is that? Well, there's two ways of looking at it is one, do you have to want to win every single client yourself? Mm -hmm. No, because that's a tremendous amount of effort work and also can be expensive to do that. Yeah. So w the way that, that I look at it is how can we a get somebody to stop and pay attention and then B do such a good job with the content yeah. that they're willing to share it with their friends. Because like, let's just say we create an ad mm -hmm. or an organic social piece of content. Yeah. And we seed it to one person and that one person shares it to 20 people. Yeah. And then out of the 20 people, five more people share it to another 20 people. Yeah. It's that viral coefficient that you're looking for. It's, mm -hmm. it's where real scale can come from if you can create content, whether it's paid or organic, yeah. that people are willing to share with everybody they know. I love that. Can you describe a little bit of the types of content you created every day to build that following of a million followers in 30 days? Yeah, I tested everything because to me, again, generating a million followers in 30 days wasn't about making myself an influencer. It wasn't about making myself famous. Yeah. It was about testing and learning. Mm. So I tested everything. I tested inspirational quotes from uh, celebrities and influencers. I tested my own inspirational quotes. I tested yeah. podcast interviews I did, comedic-based content, political-based content, pet-based content. Yeah. I'm just rapidly iterating to understand what it would take for different people from different backgrounds, from different parts of the world to stop, pay attention to what I have to say, and then click the follow button. I love that. So it's just, it's just, it's just the hook points and it's basically just getting them to stop, to notice. And then you're going into your story, like almost your hero's journey about how you're the same, you've had the same struggles, and then basically going into your offer to get them to really engage. I love that. Yeah, because like how can you expect to sell somebody something if they won't even like stop? and yeah. pay attention to you. <laughs> Very good point. Hey, Brandon, I can't thank you enough for being on the show with us today. Do you have any final thoughts or advice for our listeners? Yeah, I think that one of the biggest fundamentals of being successful in this space is just your mindset. And like yeah. anything, it's understanding why you're doing what you're doing mm -hmm. and that it's it's a journey. Like, mm. And that's why the, I really ingrain the hypothesis test and pivot is if mm. something doesn't work, Mm -hmm. Keep testing, keep learning until you find the right answer that you're going after. Yeah, I, so true, so true. It's all about ever learning, right? Is, is, is training or learning something that you did or is it something you do? 
yeah. it's something you do if you want to be the very best at what you do, right? LeBron James doesn't just go out and have a great rookie year and then stop shooting the ball, right? He kept practicing and to became arguably one of the all-time best. Where can our listeners learn about more about you and your training, though? How can they get involved? Yeah, I, 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 people that are going to be interested in this. Yeah, I would say the the best place, even before, even if you're interested in the One Million Followers book, I would highly suggest starting with the Hook Point book because it'll set you up for success. And we also talk a lot about social media in that book. Yeah. Uh, so you can go to hookpoint.com to learn Hookpoint. more about that. Hookpoint.com. Yeah, and then we have a, a free masterclass uh, that I mentioned. It's hookpoint.com forward slash masterclass, and it's all about hook points as well. Okay, and yeah, and we'll, and we'll put that in there for everybody. So hookpoint.com forward slash masterclass? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Love that. Brandon, you're the best. Uh, stay safe out there. You're in California still. You guys still in lockdown out there? Everything going good? Yeah, it's still kind of in lockdown. I'm about ready to get out of here. So. <laughs> I don't blame you, brother. All right, man. Thanks for being on. We're going to have you on here again. Everybody go to hookpoint.com, enroll, get his book, go through the masterclass, hookpoint.com forward slash masterclass. If you want to grow your social media profiles, this is the expert to learn from because uh, it's not just theory. It's actually stuff that actually works today in 2020. Thanks, Brandon, for being on. Thanks for having me. It was great tonight. Now, if you're serious about joining the top 1%, I mean the top 1%, and you want to experience more training content just like this, click the links right over there. Right over there, they're exactly what you need to see next. You see, I release new episodes featuring top salespeople and sales authorities, multiple six-figure, high six-figure, even seven-figure earners every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday every single week at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you're new here, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button right below, right below, and join our new Facebook group, Sales Revolution. You see, it's free, and there's a link in the description below just for you. We put it there for you. Finally, I make posts on Facebook and Instagram each and every day with more tips and training. So be sure and follow me and turn on your notifications. So make a comment in the first seven minutes to any of my latest posts, share this episode, and there's a very real chance that you're gonna win some killer prizes. And here's the thing, don't sit on the sidelines, don't be like everyone else, get into the game, join the sales revolution, stay active, get involved, learn the right skills, and we will show you how to take your life and income to a level that most only dream about. Stay safe. Talk to you soon.